this and you know it. Bro, we want to hear this. Okay. So I, I quoted Dominic Crossan and Bart Ehrman. You can go check them out. If you check his book, Jesus Exists. Okay. If, uh, that's Bart Ehrman. The book you're holding. And, uh, Look at Dominic Crossan's major work, yeah? They don't agree with me as an evangelical Christian, but they both say that he died on the cross. Now, Victor Vermes, who's, a, who, who's recently died, was a world authority on Josephus. And I know the scholarship of Josephus, right? I have a book which trashes it. Right? The scholarship of Josephus at the present academic time, you can go and check it out. You can find uh, Victor Vermes's article about it. He's recently died. He was an expert in Dead Sea Scrolls. He said, that scholarship is three parts. One, there are some who say all of Josephus is absolutely true, right? Because there's a bit about the resurrection. And some, most of the scholars in the middle say that Josephus is true about the cross dying, but the resurrection was interpreted by a third century monk. Then there's a small minority of scholars on the other side, you said Josephus was complete fabrication. What I'm saying is, the vast majority of scholars would not agree with your position. They would agree with me that Josephus is saying that he, 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 he was crucified, right? Now, here's the next point. The, uh, I'm, just, I'm just I'm getting a bit tired because I've been going through the day. Um, the next point is... Uh, I'm just tired. That, I'm, it's not. I'm That's right. stuck with you. So, I'm just. I'm just, okay. I'm just so tired. let me deal with the point that you've made. I know this is your traditional Christian response. Not historians look. Historians, by their nature, are naturalists. They believe not in miracles. So if someone, just if someone is put on the cross, of course they'll believe the natural outcome would be death not saved by God, by a miracle, because they don't believe in miracles. So if you take the same scholars that you've quoted, do they believe the resurrection is a historical fact? If you ask Bert Ehrman, what would he say? Certainly, this is not a historical fact, because history does not deal with miracles. Resurrection is something that is most improbable, because it's a miracle. History deals with which is probable. Reality. Probable. So, historical fact, crucifixion. Okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. Can I interrupt? Out of the question. So why don't they accept, even though crucifixion and resurrection both are mentioned at the same time by various? They will take crucifixion as a fact, but not resurrection as a fact. And the reason being, I told you, crucifixion means someone died on the cross. It's a natural thing. People die because not everyone dies. There's no miracle to it. But resurrection means someone died and rose again. It's a miracle. It doesn't happen every day. So that means your evidence from the scholars are not evidence at all. It, it, your scholars are stating what is obvious. That's why I asked you to really engage with the point that I said. Josephus, was he there? A he wasn't there. Eyewitness. The answer is, from every single scholar that you can quote, no, he wasn't. That's correct. Because he was much later. Second point. That's why the you're documents, debating it. The documents that we have of Josephus, they do not come from the time that he was around. These extant documents is about 900 to 1,000 years or even much later. The earliest is probably 900 years later. So, you haven't dealt with that. You have brought some logical fallacies of scholars, X, Y, Z. I'm not interested in scholars. I'm interested in the evidence the scholars have bring. Which New Testament Let me unpack what you've said now. No, 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 you're putting me off, mate. Can I just, can I just, can, you're putting me off. Let me interject, with, let me engage with what you said, right? Because you're putting in, I'm getting yeah, yeah, okay. Free saying. speech, but you're a Christian, you can't speak freely. No, because, you I'm, you not. Be because I'm tired yeah, yeah, and I need to focus on what he's saying and you're putting me off. The energy that I need to yeah, listen to him, you're putting me off, right? You're quite arrogant, first of, then you are a Christian. First of all, right, you're making a logical fallacy, you're equivocating. We were talking about the cross. The reason why Bar Ehrman and Dominic Crossan believe that Jesus died on the cross is because of a criteria called multiple attestation. Listen, an enemy attestation. If your enemy, if your enemy is against you and says that the person died, we'll get to the manuscript evidence in a minute, says that if you, he died, that is solid evidence. That's why Bart Ehrman, you can make notes on this, that is why Bart Ehrman, Bart Ehrman, 
and Dominic Crossan believe Jesus died, and, and, and Dominic Crossan said that Jesus dying on the cross uh, is the most well attested fact in history. They don't believe in the resurrection because Dominic Crossan, right listen, Dominic Crossan has Common a presupposition. Everyone has presupposition. Excuse me. Everyone has a presupposition. Everyone has presupposition. And they don't believe in the supernatural God where God can do miracles. So they rule out the resurrection. But Dale Allison, who is a skeptic like them, says that there are evidence of the resurrection. We could go into that. Now, let's get back to Josephus. You said eyewitnesses. Eyewitnesses. I've read the, the, the main I read the main book. Josephus wrote a book. The Josephus wrote a book. And that book new. was his historical Stupid method. Old book. His historical method. Now, the first century historians, make a note of this man so you can go and check it, right? The first century historians, Josephus and Tacitus, right? They took their cue about writing history from a guy called Polybius. Polybius was a second century uh, Greek historian. But he lived before listen, after. Uh, listen, you can make a note of this. Make a note of this and go check he it out. Lived after. Let me finish. Let me You're finish. actually quoting someone who This was alive. second century historian said. But this second century after. historian said. You're actually this a second, liar. Excuse me. You're a this second liar. century You're historian. Christian. This second century historian said that if you're going to write good history, use eyewitness material. Now he was that's the not, model. He was the model. That was the writing of the first century historians. So when Josephus and Tacitus are writing, they're going to check out what they say. And I'll prove it to you. If you read the Gospel of Luke, he, he, says, he, says, he, says, he, says, he says, we gather eyewitness material. The Greek word for eyewitness, make a note of this, man, sir. The word eyewitness that Luke uses is the exact same Greek word that Polybius uses for eyewitness, right? So that's why there is a movement in scholarship at the moment that now many scholars, because of people like um, uh, Balcom, Richard Balcom, people like him, there is a movement now in academic circles to take the Gospels as having eyewitness material. There's been a big debate for the last eight years about it, right? So, now manuscripts. So I dealt with, let me come back, let me come back, let let's me finish. Let's do one point at a time. Let, yeah, yeah. Let's, so do we're, let's do one point at a time. No, no, can, because you did three can, points. So, man, so you, you did three points. You, you did ahead. three go points. Ahead. You did three points. So I need to finish the manuscript. Right, I did the scholars, I did the eyewitness, and now we go to the manuscripts. Right. And how do you die about If you study you the works, if you study the works of Plato, right, we only have a handful of manuscripts of the works of Plato. You took them. Listen. We have you a, are a thief. We have a couple of small manuscripts of Plato's works, a few of his books, round about 2nd AD, oh, 500 years after Plato. The vast majority of Plato's manuscripts that we have is uh, the same as Josephus, round about the same. No critic, no philosopher is going to say we don't have Plato's works. When you look at ancient historiography, that point what you made about the gap, time gap of historical material with Josephus and any other ancient literature, that is generally the time gap, right? And it, but scholars don't say it didn't happen. Right? They don't know because okay. they're still scholars. But How are you? Either. You're still in Jason? I'll finish here. Yeah. I answered three things. Yeah. Scholars, I answered let eyewitness, me, and I answered me, manuscript. Let me respond to you in the time. Jason, right? Yeah. Jason, I asked you, was Joseph as an eyewitness? The answer is obviously categorically no. That's so Josephus had information about the crucifixion from someone else. That's correct. So the point still stands, you have no eyewitness account outside the Bible. These are accounts written by people who got from somewhere else. So it doesn't matter whether he got it from Polybius or whatever, it doesn't matter. That's correct. Okay? So Josephus was not an eyewitness. Second thing you mentioned about the manuscripts, I'll come back to the other point. Manuscripts, look, is my life and death resting on Plato and his book? I can still live my life and have an outlook and ideology about the hereafter without reading Plato at all. So it doesn't matter if Plato, we only have 12 manuscripts or something. If my life and death is going to rest on belief in a book, I need to be certain. Is this book being accurate? 
and been trans, uh, what's called, transmitted accurately over the generations, over the time, over the centuries. What do you know that about is why, ancient Greek language? That is, why, that is why, when it comes to the Bible, for example, you have to pull up documents which are very close to the time. That's not 1,000 years later, like the earliest manuscripts of the Torah is again like 1,000 years later than Prophet Moses. And the earliest New Testament writings yeah. were 70 years after the alleged, I yeah. stress, alleged but, crucifixion. But the extant manuscripts of the New Testament is more than a century later. So, so when we are talking about manuscripts, manuscripts, yes, if it's a religious text, our criteria is going to be more stricter. Standards are going to be more higher compared to Harry Potter's book. <laughs> I don't have to read Harry Potter to get salvation. That's right. Yeah? So it's not important whether only a few books of Plato survive and I accept Plato from there. Okay? Because our standards are a bit lower in accepting the historicity of those books. The thing you mentioned about the third point about criteria of attestation. Are you seriously saying the resurrection doesn't have the same criteria of attestation? Are you seriously saying this same criteria is not available for resurrection? Of course there is. And yet the same scholars using the same criteria, they accept crucifixion and they reject the resurrection. That means this criteria that you're bringing up from scholarship something that needs to be scrutinized to the depth as we can go as much as we can go. That is why I ask, these evidence that you bring, these are well-attested rumor. When the Quran says, Walakin lahum, as you are trying to answer, and it appeared to them so, meaning what? There are people within the time of Christ, they thought mistakenly, of course, that Christ was crucified. And he's saying this was a mistaken perception. If some people come along and walk by just over there and they think you are the prince of Russia, for example, and they write on the newspapers and then the news media outlet, are you the prince of Russia? Of course not. But people had a mistaken perception because you look like one of those princes and they thought from afar that you are one of them. People's perception can be mistaken because People don't really engage with the scene at the time. Maybe they were not there. And your New Testament tells us when this alleged crucifixion event was taking place, all the disciples have forsaken him and then fled. They were not there in the scene. So who, Some disciples they were as well. So who were actually on the scene and writing? That is why these events are actually rumors and on you know, in addition to this, when I said there are earlier church fathers like Origen, Irenaeus, and various others, they wrote volumes against those heretical sects who didn't believe in the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, whether in the bodily crucifixion or whether in the actual crucifixion, because some believed in substitution, other believed Christ was sitting there on the tree and laughing, and laughing at the one who's been crucified. Say, look. They're crucifying the wrong man. So there are historical material available from Bart Ehrman. The books that you, you know, you caught, I don't. I didn't bring Bart Ehrman in, you did. He wrote books called The Lost Scripture, in which documenting extant manuscripts of several writings in er talking about early Christianities and their beliefs, in which we know there are manuscripts that are available which talks about these kind of things. The second book of Great Seth, the Apocalypse of Peter, for example, various others, name but, but two, which talks about these things and against heresies by Irenaeus, I think he's, he's written that. They talk about very clearly there are other person believed to have been crucified. So when the Quran says they are in conjecture, they have no certainty, we can surely see that. Yes. Let me finish, let me finish. Right. I'm going to rebut you, and when I've done that, I'm going to leave the last bit for you to say, yeah? And then we'll call it a day. Yeah? So I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the respect for you to rebut me after that, and then we'll call it a day because I'm tired, yeah? So I'll rebut you now. I'll rebut you now. 
and then I'll give you the last of two or three, three minutes. Don't go too long. Him, let me ask you, no, 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 no. Can, you, can you listen to him first? Can, 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 and then we can come. We'll, can can, can, right. I'm just tired now, yeah? Right. First of all, you and I know, you studied, I've studied, we can take bits and back, bits from scholars and, and whatever. All I'm just showing you with Bart Ehrman and Dominic Crossan is that your general scholarly world, I know it's an argument from authority, believe that Jesus died, right? And they do that because not just of one criteria, but multiple criteria and multiple attestation of evidence. So when you're talking and saying, oh, we're basing our life on a thousand year ago manuscript, yeah? I'm saying, no, it's more complex than that. There are multiple attestation, enemy attestation, multiple attestation. You have Tacitus, you have Josephus, you have other bits of information going around. The next thing is, you talk about these other sources. Your sources are different from mine. Mine are based on eyewitnesses. The first century historians, Josephus, Tacitus, and Luke, used eyewitness material. You said, who was at the, at the cross? Mother Mary, and there were women at the cross, so they could have seen that and then passed that eyewitness to the apostles. In fact, if you read 1 John chapter 1, it says that they saw, so some, some of them must have been there, so it couldn't have been that they all run away, they must have come back. The next thing as well is, uh, I'm just getting really tired now, is, um, is, um, just, uh, I'm just getting, I'm just tired, it's not that Take I can't, it's just not that I can't re rebut you. Um, Oh yeah, you're talking about these uh, critics of, 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 of the, the Gospels and, and the, res uh, the, the Jesus dying on a cross. If you do a study of the Gnostic Gospels, the Gnostic Gospels and other writings quote the New Testament. They quote Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. They quote the New Testament. The other thing as well, if you do a study of the Gnostic Gospels and you look at the how they understand the historical information of Jesus' time. They don't mention much about Jerusalem or anything specific about the time of Jesus' life. But the Gospels are meaty and full of historical detail. For example, it mentions Jerusalem many, many times. It tells you where the gates are, where the pools are. So the Gospels are much more solidly historical than the Gnostics and the other heretical writings. And th secondly, that the Gnostic Gospels are quoting the New Testament and the Gospels, which tells you that the Gospels, the false Gospels, Gnostic Gospels, came later, okay? So that's my basic rebuttal of what you're saying. If you want to read a book, uh, Jesus and the Eyewitnesses by Richard Malcolm, and then the opposing view is uh, Bart Ehrman recently wrote a book uh, trying to rebut that. I can't remember what it's named, but I've, I've looked at it. So those are the two scholarly words. Anyone wants to engage in this debate, needs to read. Sure. Over to you. I'll let you rebut me out of courtesy because I, I roughed you up last time and I'm sorry to do that. Okay? I'm giving you the respect to say whatever. So if you don't go too, too long because you are prejudiced. I'm letting him rebut me for a few minutes, yeah? I came in the discussion room hearing you were presenting the evidence from outside the Bible as a historical evidence. And you also made a statement um, of the nature that there are no opposing views. So this is why it's not that interesting because there are certainly opposing views to this traditional account of crucifixion before Quran came into the city. We know that. Whether you call them Gnostics or otherwise, they're certainly presenting you the opposite views where Christ was not crucified. So these are historical material. Whether you call these are materials by people who believe, uh, cannot believe by their natural ideology uh, in its bodily death of of Christ because they were spiritualists and Gnostics and so on. That's not my point. My point is there are certainly historical material available before Quran, before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where people believe. Not just one person, there were groups of people because that's why it really is rather church fathers had to write against them. They believe not in the crucifixion of Christ, but they believe someone else was crucified. So the Quran did not introduce this belief of the substitution by someone else. Yeah? So that's point number one. Secondly, this kind of you know appeal to the authority, yes, it can work when it happens to secular material. 
But when it comes to religious scripture, we have to have a higher standard. We have to have a stricter criteria, as I mentioned earlier on, because these are our lives, which depends on, on, on these books. Um, so if you were to read a book which is now composed, you know, 1,000 years after a particular prophet, you might ask, what happened within this 1,000 years time? Because we know things change, right? So this is one thing to consider. Now, I am not a hyper-skeptic. I have brought this hyper-skepticism because you will realize many people around the globe, when it comes to the Quran, they are hyper-skeptical. They say, where is your Quranic manuscript? Your Quranic manuscript is 250 years later. So now, what happened was this. So we produced, demonstrated with documentary evidence the Quran is not 250 years later. We have much earlier Quran from that time. We have Quran within 100 years of the time of the Prophet And then their rhetoric shifted, saying, oh no, where's the complete manuscript? It keeps on changing. Initially, you have no documentary evidence, so we can't trust anything. Now we've provided documentary evidence, they said, where's the complete one? So the same argument can go against the Bible. So my line of argument here is merely to show and demonstrate we have to be consistent in the approaches that we take in engaging with each other's scripture. If we are going to be hyper-skeptical in one, then we should do the same with our own scripture. Do you agree? That's all. I can understand why scholars have a consensus in the Pacific and I give you my reason because their naturalism presupposes that this is what they take. But the same scholars with the same evidence, similar kind of evidence available for resurrection, they don't take resurrection as a fact, historical fact, because of their naturalism. That is why we say these kind of things now need to be looked into more detail with other criteria at hand other criteria that we can actually employ on the table to discuss religious scripture authenticity and their transmission but i thank you for giving me the time it's a nice talking to you today I'm just going to preach. I'm just going to preach for a minute. Jesus loved you. He died for you. God bless you. Remember that He gave His life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whoever believes on Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He gave His life for you. So trust Him as your Lord and your Savior. God bless you. God bless you. Thanks.